What's up, guys? Jordan from Bennett's Customs. We are um, on the Roadster today, which is great, um, last few days. And uh, basically what I have here is the frame back from the Sandblasters, as you guys just saw. Um, and yeah, what he had done um, was basically did the whole internal bit of the frame inside and kind of out underneath, but left the outside of the frame rails kind of the same uh, patina or, you know, kind of surface rust look. Uh, but basically we're leaving that and then I will um, rust convert it with that Galmec and, you know, make it match the, the body itself because at this time we are not painting it. Um, maybe sometime in the future, but for now just, yeah, like we had mentioned, just gonna make a nice old dirty hot rod. Um, but what I need to do is get this straightened out. So there's a few problem areas. Um, I was just ran over to the print shop, got the blueprints to the 1932 frame, uh, which was great. So I'll be able to use this as a reference point um, to set up on the table and uh, start doing a few repairs. So on this one, what I'm gonna do is remove the front cross member um, and start to fix that because there's a few problem areas. So we're uh, gonna get it up on the table. I'll just clamp it down. Then we're gonna remove that fix the issues, and then reinstall it back in. So let's get into it. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Hit that notifications button. Is that it? All right, so as you can see, these frame front horns are actually quite a bit twisted and bent, um, which is pretty standard from being from 1932. So uh, what I need to do is we have some little addressings here that need to be done. Looks like someone's used an arc welder back in the day, which is not a bad thing. Um, but we're gonna clean all this up and make sure everything's structural and safe. And I will remove these old rivets and then we'll, we'll take this cross member out. I'll clamp it down to the table, clean everything up. Underneath still needs a little bit of welding. Um, and then just certain things like this, we got a little crack in the frame there. So that needs to be addressed on this side there's actually two bits where it's, something's actually been torn right out. So I've yeah, got two areas that I will use these as reference points. That one's actually torn as well. So I will end up um, cutting these out and welding in a new little piece and then re-drilling the holes. So everything kind of stays where it should. Um, so for right now though, we're just gonna get this clamped to the table. Um, and then when I go to do the rear frame kickups where they're um, quite badly damaged. Uh, I will actually probably use a bit of um, two by four, 100 by 50, um, and I'll just weld a few of these on edge to the table, and then I'll clamp this down and square it all off. So what I what I got here is my center line on the table, and um, what I'll end up doing is squaring this all up. I'll use the laser, and then we can use those drawings. That'll give us a reference point off center. Um, and it, it's actually, you know, tells us exactly on center of each hole um, and on the edge of the frame where it's supposed to sit. So we can use those to make sure everything's square and what it should be. So um, that's kind of a, a big deal before we start setting up body on here and getting the rear end and everything sorted. So I want to make sure that this is square. So first off, what we're going to do is get this removed. So it won't be too hard, pretty straightforward. So I'm just gonna clamp it down to the table so it doesn't move. And um, yeah, we'll get this thing removed. All 
right, so I managed to actually get all the bolts that were holding part of the, um, the lower portion of the cross membrane and on the side. So on the top, these used to be um, factory riveted in and um, luckily they're all pretty, the tops are, majority of them are all gone anyway. So um, what I'm able to use is just, just put that on the linishing wheel and just brought it to a nice point. Um, yeah, and every time I use it and it flattens out, I just keep doing it. So I just put that in the drill, let it spin, and then just turn it down. So, and I just got a little pneumatic rivet tool. Um, and basically all I'm doing is just caching it on the top and punching those straight through. And then um, a little undecided yet what I'm gonna do, I can either just plug weld these back up and um, finish it off or you won't see it or I could actually um, put the, hot, the rivets back in. I do have a, a bunch of them, so I could hot rivet it back in. So that'd look pretty nice anyways, make it look kind of more stock. Um, yeah, and they definitely look really nice. So um, yeah, so we're gonna punch the rest of these out and then we should be able to pull this out. That is the front cross member. And as you can see, don't know if you can quite see that. They're cracked. That one's cracked. That's cracked. That one's really bad as well. Um, and then this is, you know, kind of the problem area of what we're trying to work with. And then as you can see under here, that's where that crack went. And now we have a crack in the, this is kind of the upper support plate um, that kind of shares the load for the U-bolts that go over and hold the spring in. So what I'm gonna have to do is I could probably get away with just putting a weld on that, but I think what I should do is probably grind these rivets off, pull this plate out, remake one that doesn't have the crack in it that'll allow me to get to the back side of this and I can clean all this up and try and re-weld a, a little bit of a um, section that needs to be put in. And then these I'm gonna have to clean up with the wire wheel. I'll probably use a, the Dremel and kind of carve them out a little bit and then I'll just fill, um, do a few passes on those as well. So she's pretty buggered. Um, you know, you could probably start with just a new one and slide it in, but um, yeah, I mean, we have it. It's in relatively good shape, so we just need to make it better than what it is. So what I'll do is probably pull the frame off now, and then we can just work on this piece and get this sorted. Mm -hmm. pretty buggered, but I think we'll be able to make it work. So I think with this piece, that was that strapping that kind of sits inside here is a bit of reinforcement. Um, it was cracked and it was actually quite nice that I removed it because there's a fair bit of rust underneath there and it's just nice to get to the back side of that weld. Um, I could probably flatten this out bevel that and re-weld it together and it would be okay but i also might just make a new piece and um put it in so i think that might be what i end up doing kind of thinking as as i go with this so um what i'm going to do right now is just quickly wire wheel this little area out just inspect it um and then we can kind of start to make some templates little wire wheel gets in there.
All right, so um, where the original weld was, the, the two panels were kind of like that. So I've actually just cut and kind of straightened them out. And then what I'm just gonna do now is just make a pass with the MIG, um, grind that smooth, and that's part of it done. So nothing too overly complicated, just trying to get it a little bit straighter so it sits better, so. Um, Just clamp it for a second. just done there was kind of grind off the, those old welds that were there um, and I've just added weld where I've needed to so there's a few areas that I'll just use the MIG and make a couple passes on and then we'll smooth that out. Um, you could use the TIG welder as well but this just makes kind of quick work of it so um, I'm almost kind of finished off this one area so I'm just going to put a little weld in one little area and um, smooth that out and then we'll uh, reassess and see what it looks like. So what I did was made a few passes on here um, and kind of built that corner back up that was um, pretty low. Uh, and then as well as just a little pass in there, we cut and kind of blended that out a little bit better. So now it's nice and smooth um, on the inside as well. And what we'll end up doing is just gonna get a little weld in here um, and then grind that smooth rust treat this, we'll make that new plate, stick that plate in, um, get that in there, and then, um, yeah, we'll paint this with some primer on the inside and outside so it's sealed, and then we'll um, get those rivets done. And then we gotta work on these corners where they're cracked and broken. Um, so 
think what I'll do with that, what I mentioned before, is I'll just use the Dremel, carve them out just a little bit, and then, um, yeah, I'll just use the TIG on these ones and uh, make sure they're done. And I'm sure a lot of you guys know, but if you do have any cracks and you kind of want them to stop, the best way to stop a crack in steel, if it's just kind of going, is to actually drill a hole right at the end of it. So it, um, it, it, it eliminates it from cracking anymore or stressing. Um, so there was one little area here that, um, that I could use that. So I might just drill a little hole right through here and that'll kind of stop that little hairline crack from, from continuing um, to grow any bigger. And, uh, and then we'll just fill that, plug weld that little, little tiny hole up. Um, once these are done, then basically we kind of have finished off the majority of this front cross member until I repair both those sides of the frame rails and then we can fit this back in. Um, so what I'll end up doing is just, uh, yeah, continuing to just try and clean this up and then we'll make these now. Okay, so I got a little bit of cleaning up still to do inside here where we've kind of laid another weld on and it's kind of hard to get a little grinder in there, but that little, wherever it is, little finger grinder, that thing works really well. Um, but I'd mentioned that I was gonna build another one of these and I don't really think it's necessary. I'm just, I've beveled the edge. I've left enough original material there to know exactly where they're gonna go back together but I'm just gonna weld this and um, stick it back in and put some rivets in and I reckon it's gonna be as, as good as it, better than it was before, because it was cracked, so. But um, yeah, I don't think it's quite necessary to have to actually um, do another piece, so. Um, I'm just gonna mock this up, clamp these pieces in. Um, I may even just grab some um, bolts that fit through here and, and uh, bolt it in put some ones in there and then uh, I'll make sure I do this piece then we'll tack it pull it out weld it finish it off and then stick it back in so let's do that now
Okay. So, as you can see, I've just used some bolts, put these through, and now I have an area where I can weld this up. Um, and then everything is sitting as it should. The holes will line up, basically stick it back in and it was as, you know, it was originally. So, um, yeah, there's many ways to do this, but I think this will be just, just fun the way it is. So what I'll do now is just um, give that a pass, let it cool down, pull it out, and we'll finish it off, sand it, and then we'll figure out exactly how we're gonna stick it in with some rivets. So we do not have any acetylene. We do not have any acetylene. I just threw the cross member and this brace in the sandblaster um, just to get all the surface rust. It was kind of tough to get inside here with the wire wheel. So um, yeah, just smoothed everything out, turned out really nice. Um, and then basically what's gonna happen is that's gonna drop into place like that. And then we will put some rivets in it. So. Um, unfortunately, I don't have like a proper um, tool to press rivets, nor do I have acetylene. We've actually just, just run out and it's Christmas holidays now, so nothing is open. Maybe tomorrow. But what I think I could do is just put them in and actually just plug weld them from the backside. Um, this is all held together with the leaf spring and the U-bolts, so everything is, has pressure on it. So I don't think it's too crucial that they need to be like full pounded together. I think I could get the, you know, use my, my hardware, put it in and then pull the hardware out per um, rivet and then do it that way. So I think that's what I'll do. And what we're gonna do right now, is just throw a little bit of primer down on the, ins on the inside of this and the inside of that because we won't be able to get to it afterwards. Hopefully I have some. So this is just a little bit of Metal Shield Dulux Etch Prime. That'll just seal it. And then we'll plop that on. And while I'm mixing this, we'll just see what I got for some rivets. Let's 
see if one of these is the right size. They are exactly, which is perfect. So I'll just clean four of those up on the wire wheel, trim them to fit. We'll um, stick those in. They'll look really nice. Definitely wear a proper respirator with doing this. Luckily, we kind of have all the doors open because it is very hot today. I'll just give this a coat. Light coats are usually probably pretty good, but it's kind of nice and warm right now, so. This should dry pretty quickly. Um, okay, so let's just see what these guys are like. So I got those ones or this is the bigger ones. Those ones fit. Nice and tight. Might be some shorter guys, similar. In size, sweet. So I'll just run these with the wire wheel quickly. <laughs> So I'm just going to trim these with the grinder, nip them, they're just a little bit too long. Um, and then I've got my bolts in there, so everything's nice and tight. I'll stick these in. I may even actually use the TIG welder and just do a nice pass right around them, turn the heat up, um, and then uh, should hold it in, should. So you can see we got them all welded in. I just used the TIG welder and standard mild steel filler rod, I believe it was 1.2, um, and just turned the heat right up just to get some really good penetration. And look, it, you know, obviously using a proper riveting tool um, and heating them up with the acetylene um, would be kind of the way to go. but. This should do the job for the kind of, for the, the piece that this does, um, I'm very confident in that being sufficient enough. So as you can see, it kind of looks 
you know, stock again, which is quite neat. Um, we we're able to clean everything up. Um, there's no kind of issues in it anymore. We've addressed those, that hairline crack by drilling the hole at the end of it and welded it. Um, and everything else is kind of straightened out and cleaned up. Um, and yeah, kind of just mock this back up on the table and, and um, it's definitely a lot more, like more straight than kind of it was before. So uh, what I still need to do is obviously um, sandblast and, and um, try and get these ones in. So like I said, I'll just use the Dremel and then I'll just do a pass with the TIG welder again as well, just on those little bits. Um, and then once it's in, we'll just, we'll just stick it in now just to see how it's gonna fit. Something like that. So it already looks a million times better than it did, that's for sure. Um, and what I'll do is I'll clean up these areas here. These will get plug welded um, and the rest I'll actually probably, yeah, um, nut and bolt or um, plug weld. But what I'll do is we'll finish off repairing the frame on both sides. Then I'll hammer and dolly this flat and straight because I would love to do a really nice pass along here with the TIG as well. Um, just to, you know, make sure that this cross member is not going anywhere once it's repaired. So, um, yeah, I think it'll definitely look the part and, uh, you know, it'll be strong enough for, for what we want it to be. So it'll, um, yeah, definitely be really nice to kind of get like work in sections and get this thing straight and, and a lot better than it is. There's, yeah, the back is a bit of an error, bit of a problem, but that'll be in a pretty good video. I'll show you how to set it up and we'll actually go off some drawings and try and get it as close to um, as factory as possible off, this, um, off the uh, diagram. So um, yeah, kind of a simple video, but we wanted to get you guys something at least and just show that we are trying to make traction on this. Um, it's obviously been busy um, coming leading up to Chrissy. So um, yeah, I think over the period um, from now until the new year, hopefully I'll be able to get this on the table and knock out a fair bit of work because I would love to see this thing kind of in rolling uh, or mock up um, stage and you know see how that 36 rear end is going to fit into it and kind of figure out what to do with the leaf spring. Um, and that stuff. So yeah, I think it'd be really cool. One thing too, you guys had mentioned, um, uh, Fairview have asked about the music that we use in our channel. Uh, and Ben has actually made a YouTube playlist. So it's in the description. It's a clickable link. So if you just go down to it, click on it, it's going to take you over to um, another window in YouTube. And it's basically a whole playlist. So you can click on it, set it up in your workshop and get to work. And you'll have a great variety of music to keep you going through the Christmas holidays. Um, yeah, we'll see you guys on another episode. Um, just wanted to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Um, hopefully, yeah, you guys have a great time coming into the new year. And, and uh, yeah, for everyone in Canada, um, hopefully you guys are enjoying that massive snowfall that you just got. I am a little bit envious, to be honest. Um, Christmas here is just a little bit different. I'm used to the cold weather. and and um, you know, some, uh, some snow. So they're getting a white Christmas, which is exciting, but yeah, we'll uh, see you guys on another episode. Make sure you like and subscribe, hit that notifications, and we'll see you probably in 2023. So big year, big year for us. We got some crazy cool projects um, coming in. So we got lots on the go, Old still needs, still needs a lot of love. So that'll be a kind of a long-term project, but we got the Roadster and we got a couple more uh, projects coming in that we will, um, yeah, we'll kind of let you guys know further what those are be. So yeah, we'll have a quite the variety. But uh, anyways, yeah, great to see you guys. See you on another episode. Mm -hmm.